In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to use Perplexity AI to learn your research field and be able to find your most recent articles in your research field. So this is Perplexity AI. Without an account or anything, you can ask it a question and be able to get answers. And this is going to be a little bit more accurate than something like ChatGPT, especially in the sources it provides. So it does provide sources for all of its answers. And you can see here that you have the option to select the basically the type of information it's pulling from. So it can pull from all, which is across the entire internet, just for writing, for academics. So if you're specifically looking for academic literature, you can use that. Reddit, YouTube, Wolfram Alpha, and Wikipedia for the different references that you want. So I'm going to start with all, and I'm going to ask it a really specific question about something in my own research field. So I'm going to ask it to explain how traveling wave ion mobility work. And then all I have to do is press this little button right here, and it's going to direct. Now, Copilot is the GPT-4. So if you get Pro, you get access to GPT-4 versus the GPT-3. It's built on the same kind of open AI's GPT engine as something like ChatGPT and a lot of other tools that are out there are built on the same engine. So when we hit search, you can see it's starting to give me information here. And what you can see, obviously, I am on a dark background here. But you have little numbers here that say one, three. It doesn't always go in like a really good order, but basically you have these numbers here is one, two, three. And these are all citations essentially. So if you scroll down, you can see the citations here. And if you click on them, it will open up that citation in a new tab. So here you can see that this is the fundamentals of traveling wave eye mobility spectrometry. This is kind of like the twins Bible in our field of like the actual mathematics behind it. So this is a really, really good article for it to find and to cite. And you can see it cites that kind of most often there. And Waters is kind of the inventor of the traveling wave eye mobility. So it brings up one of their brings up one of their posters talking about traveling wave eye mobility here. The Springer is probably a research article, so it's talking about collision cross-sections with traveling wave eye mobility. And then we have a Wikipedia article on eye mobility spectrometry, so a little bit more broadly. And finally, one other, what it looks like, a research article on improved calibration through traveling wave eye mobility. So overall, you can see that because I selected all, I'm getting a lot of different types of references. And so you can see that this is basically written in normal, plain English. Traveling wave ion mobility spectrometry is a technique used to separate ions based off their mobility in a gas phase. And then it starts talking about the application of DC waves given a wavelength and a velocity that the ions can ride on. The ions are separated out by their mobility, which is a measure of how quickly they move through the gas under the influence of an electric field. And this is just me basically going through seeing if it's giving an accurate answer from a field I actually know. So this is the key point. So it talks about how the ions are ionized first. So that's kind of the first step before they can get in to the ion mobility instrument. And then they're introduced to a region with traveling wave is generated by DC potential to a set of adjacent rings. That's accurate. That's how we get the electric wave. and Traveling wave causes the ions to move through the gas phase and they are separated based off their mobility. So I'd like for it to talk a little bit more about the fact that there are gases present within this cell. I don't think they've really, they've talked about their mobility in a gas phase, but the importance of this is that ions are actually moved through a gas. So there it is. And then if you were to look at the actual references, you would get that a little bit more. And so it does talk about the mobility is proportional to the square root of its mass to charge ratio. This is actually not true. It may be, it might be proportional, but it's not exact. And then the separation is detected by a mass spectrometer. And that's true because the only form of TWIMS that's available is commercial within a mass spectrometer. And so it talks about its uh, variety of applications down here as well. And you can get obviously the sources here. Now it also gives you some related questions to ask. So what are the advantages? 
How is the potential wave generated if you're trying to get more in the instrumental? And what is the role of drift time in determining IO mobility? So I'm going to select that. That's a little bit more of the theoretical. So while this does give sources here, there are a few things that are incorrect in this. Specifically this sentence, the drift time of an ion is related to its mobility and is used to determine its charge to mass ratio. That is true if you're talking about a time of flight mass spectrometer. That is not true when you're talking about traveling wave eye mobility. So it's not completely accurate in what it's giving. Obviously, it is AI just trying to generate this information. So it is maybe a better way to kind of look at this, but then follow up with the sources to find out whether the information is more accurate or not. Now, I'm getting kind of into the weeds of something that really isn't talked about a lot when asking questions like this. So I think it's still doing a fairly good job in giving kind of broad strokes, but definitely I would wouldn't trust anything just completely generated by AI. And so you can ask different questions here as well as follow-up questions. But now what I want to do is really talk about how can you find like more relevant literature. If you've already been in your field, I want to look at a way that you can find more recent literature in your field. So I'm going to start a new thread here. It's just going to open this here. And I'm going to go from all to just academic sources. And then I'm going to ask it. So this is kind of my research field for a couple of years in grad school is the separation of steroid isomers in eye mobility spectrometry. So I'm just asking it, what are the most recent articles on that? So we can see that it gave me three different articles down here. And I'm just going to open these up. I'm going to close the ones from the previous. So this is the integrating the potential of eye mobility mass spectrometry in the separation and structural characterization of lipid isomers. And one thing I'm going to do real quick is I'm just going to search if they actually used. Okay, so they do talk about steroids quite a bit. Is this a review? This looks like a review. I think it is. Yeah, so they do talk about steroids in this. This is a much more recent review. Yeah, it's from 2023. So that's a pretty recent review on this. And then we have this formation of multimeric steroids. This is my article. This is older. This is 2019. Yeah. For traveling wave eye mobility spectrometry. So up here, it's talking about the potential of eye mobility mass spectrometry and the separation of lipid isomers. Steroids are a form of lipids. So it is kind of relevant. I think it's overall, it's information here isn't as relevant. I would just read the actual paper here. This is my study that it's talking about. The study employed twins to separate multimer steroid metal adducts of isomers and mixtures. Shows the ability to separate steroids with decreased in resolution compared with single component standard because of the formation of heterod multimers. That is kind of the ultimate conclusion that I had in my paper. Basically, we were able to get separation, but it wasn't as good as with just analyzing each steroid by itself. And then this is also my paper, I am mobility spectrometry and tandem mass spectrometry of estradiol. I think this is also in 2019. So yeah, it even says here, note the first article is the most recent one published in March, while the other two are published in 2019. So it is giving me a little bit more, but I guess I would have liked it to give a little bit more, but I'm not like really keeping up on this field anymore since I am not in this field anymore. But I think this is probably a really good review that might also include that work. So if we look at it, so yeah, this actually does include my work. Interesting, yeah. So this does include those papers of 2019 as well for my work. So overall, that is one way that you can use Perplexity AI to be able to Look up uh, information either about basic background information in your field or information about the most recent articles within a field to be able to answer specific questions with actually accurate sources. If you're struggling to learn your field or figure out what papers to read, check out my 30-day research jumpstart guide. It's a completely free PDF that you can follow. That link will be in the description below. And if you want to see how to use other AI tools in research, I will have a few tutorials that I will leave up on the screen now. And I hope to see you in the next video.